let me erase some of this information and then the next part we want to do is find then how long is it going to take for it to be back on the ground so obviously your the ground's going to happen in two areas you're going to hit the ground once when you're starting and then you come back and touch the ground after so many seconds so how long is it going to take for us to get back to the ground well we can kind of cheat I mean truthfully if you wanted to you can kind of cheat because if you're at the ground at zero seconds and then you hit your max height at three seconds then shouldn't it take about three more seconds to get back to the ground it took three seconds to get to the max height then shouldn't it take three seconds to get back down to the other side but the thing is the reason why you can kind of quote unquote cheat with all of that is the fact that it's a parabola and parabolas have to be symmetric with respect to that vertex it's like their pivoting point so if I drew the graph here I'm gonna go one two three four five six let's do we know we're at 80 feet at one second and five seconds so if we go 80 and 144 let's go 4 8 12 16 well, we'll go by 40 feet here we'll go y one foot there so this will be feet and this over here will be seconds so this will be time and this axis right here is height with respect to time so at one second we're at 80 feet one two three four five seconds we're at 80 feet at zero seconds we have no height and then we know at three seconds we're up at 44 for 144 which is right in there so I've got a curve coming up to that height and the only way I can come back down is this if I also hit the x-axis or the t-axis at six seconds okay so to answer the last question is how long does it take to hit the ground it takes six seconds to hit the ground and that answers the rest of our question and by the way if you really didn't trust or if you were kind of like mm, I'd rather be more solid on that well plug 6 back into your equation if you find h of 6 so go h of 6 and go 96 times 6 minus 16 times 6 squared if you plug that into your calculator guess what it's zero so it's going to work out either way all right let's go back to this page before us because remember I said we just accidentally, I accidentally got this out of order when I scanned this into the system let's go back to example two so we can go to some circuits real quick okay and with this circuit we're kind of doing the same thing again as we did with our last circuit what you've got going on is you have voltage you have current and you have uh, resistance and in this case we have a lamp involved and what it's, what we're telling us is giving us a specific situation is that a 100 watt lamp is connected to a 20 ohm resistor and a 120 volt power supply okay so let's kind of start with our basic how we're going to get this started what was our foundation well there's that Kirk, Kirchhoff's law remember the KVL that basically told us that the sum of the rises the voltage rises we'll put maybe voltage rises is going to equal to the sum we can use sum symbol here so the sum of the voltage um, drops okay or kind of written out that we know that the voltage source which is 120 is going to equal the voltage drops well we've got two types of drops happening here we have a voltage drop due to the lamp so I'll put L for lamp and then we have a voltage drop due to the resistance okay that 20 ohm thing so really we have 120 is equal to we're going to come back and find the voltage of the lamp but how to get the voltage of R do you remember what Ohm's law said Ohm's law says that VR is equal to I times R so VR the voltage at a resistor is its current there times the resistance there and the resistance there is 20 ohms that's what's also drawn in the picture so it's I times 20 
So VR right here is plus 20i. Okay, so we're going to take this main equation. All we have to do is figure out what VL is, and then we have our main, main, main equation that we're going to look to solve. Okay, and that way it's all going to be terms in terms of i, because the problem says we want to find the current i in amps. Okay, so and all I want to do is leave this last equation right here that I've starred. I want it all in terms of i. So all I have to do is figure out what can I replace VL with, the voltage of the lamp, in order just to have i's involved. Okay, so let's keep going on. What I know about the lamp is that it has a hundred, it's a hundred watt lamp. Okay, that's going to come powerful or very useful here in just a second. Well, we kind of introduced a brand new term that we haven't talked about before, this whole wattage. And when you know a lamp has a hundred watts, what you just found was the power of the lamp. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. The lamp power is equal to the voltage times the current. Okay, it's just kind of like Ohm's law, where the voltage is the current times the resistance. Well, the lamp's power is going to equal the voltage times the current. Okay, so the power, which is 100 watts, okay, is going to equal the voltage of the lamp times its current. Okay? Or in this case, the voltage of the lamp is going to equal 100 divided by I. So what I've, just, what I've found right here is a way that I can replace the voltage of the lamp with a fraction that has I in it. So let's go back up to our, our main equation. Let's put this in there and then that's what we're mainly going to be working with here is the fact that a total of the voltage rises, which is 120, is going to equal 100 over I to represent the lamp that's drawing on the system, plus 20I to represent the other resistance that's on the system. Okay, and now you're looking at this going, um, we're in a quadratic equation situation, and that's not looking totally quadratic at all. Okay, well, let's go through. Let's multiply everything through by i. So we multiply this left side and everything on that right side by i. And you'll get, I'm going to come back over here to the left, 120i is equal to 100 over i times i is 100. And 20i times i is definitely 20i squared. Right there, guys. Just eliminating my fractions, I've got my quadratic equation. So finishing this out so we can solve for i, which is what it asks us to do. Let's move that term over. So we have 100 minus 120i plus 20i squared. And we have to solve for i. So if nothing else, if you guys want to rearrange it so you have your ax squared plus bx plus c, so it's kind of in that decreasing order, descending order, then we can actually go about solving this thing. So let's divide everything through by 20. So that way this results with something a little smaller that we can work with. i squared minus 6i plus 5. When we go about finishing factoring this, we have i and i. So the factors of 5 add up to 6, so minus 5 and minus 1. So it's basically telling us that when i equals 5 amps, or when i is equal to 1 amp, then we found that nice situation where a 100 watt lamp is in this system and it's working in this system. Now here's the question. What's the whole difference? Why the two different potential amps? Why 5 and why 1? Okay, shouldn't it just kind of only be one possible answer? It's like, we, what's, the, what's going on here? Well, what we're kind of finding is the fact that we technically have two potential lamp sources or potentials for lamps. Let me go and circle that because that kind of answers the question a little bit on what I could be. But just to kind of finish interpreting this a little bit more, it's that going to our equation of that, talking about the voltage of the lamp, okay? So for this first case, the voltage of the lamp is 100 divided by I. So the voltage of the lamp here could be 100 over 5, which is going to equal 20. So what that's basically saying is that um, when you have 
when you have five amps of current in your system, then you can get a lamp that's actually rated at 20 volts. Or if you have a current of one amp in your system, then you can get a lamp that's actually rated at 100 volts. And so that's kind of what that's all saying. All right, let's go to our last example. 